Hi, everybody. Before we get to another great interview, the Two Opinionated podcast could really use your help. And it's easy. It's free. IMDB, which is the entertainment database, imdb.com, named us a top 100 podcast. We came in at number 82. That's a big deal because there's 15 million podcasts and growing. So to be named to anybody's top 100 list, pretty big deal for us. And the way you can help is to go to imdb.com, look up the Two Opinionated podcast, and that's it. Just bringing our page up. That traffic really helps us out. Our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. All we ask is that you subscribe. It's also free, but that really helps us to attract these amazing guests that we keep bringing on the program. And that's it. Two easy ways for you to support us, and we would really appreciate the help. Now let's get to that interview. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. I'm so excited today. I've got act actress. <laughs> you were so close. You were so close. <laughs> I told you off camera, we were discussing if it was Kirsten or Kirsten. And yeah. Kirsten, but I told you I would I would say Kirsten on camera. And so that was in my head. I was like, Kirsten, Kirsten, Kirsten. And I messed up the rest of it. And you messed up, right? You you weren't thinking deer, yeah. beer, That's right. ear. I, I'm, I I'm could redo it, up. but I'm leaving it in. Well, okay, leave it in because it's, uh, again, we're going to keep using this word. It's a little sexy. That's right. That's it's right. wrong. But thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Seriously. I'm, a, I'm, pleasure. I'm, in, I'm in the midst of a rewatch of Psych. What uh, what number rewatch is this? I I am on uh, I'm, I just started on season two, number two. Oh, good for you! Good for you! You're not like, hey, this is number fifteenth rewatch. No, no, it's my second like last night, my second time through. Okay, second. this was Psych is my son, my stepson's favorite show. So so we watched it with them growing up. They're grown now, but you know kids of their own but who got, we who got it. who into it did you get them into it or did they oh no 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 yeah, they, got they got me into it but we got we got hooked really early so we got to watch the whole it, it was that's kind of our family show because they grew up watching it so we we that watched. is so good to hear and you know i i kind of i still love hearing that you know how many years later they're like you know i watch it with my dad or my grandma and i that's what we would do on friday nights you know yeah um and you got to actually sit there and watch it and just kind of have like a little fun time and then you well and, and like life. even after they were were grown because of the movies coming out we were able to do like fam like they'd come back home we do the family movie night you know have like uh uh, so, some type of food with pineapple. So we might do pizza or maybe some tacos you? with pineapple. So we made it, it, it's still a thing. See, that's just kind of joyous. I, you know, the, the baby in my belly. So that I was actually pregnant during the, um, during I, the pilot, right? That. Yeah, it, it was, it was really, it was special, but she has yet to see a single episode. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. That girl is 18 years old. I was going to say, she's grown now. It's time. She's a grown ass adult right now. It's like she is 18 years old. She just she let her driver's permit lapse, you know, so we had to go back and do that because she's like, I don't think I want to drive. I'm not yeah, so that, the, this generation. They they don't care. They don't care. It's, and it's, it's like, not like, I, and you were probably this way, too. I couldn't wait to get my license. Like the day I turned 16, I went and got my license. I got you know, I got mine at 17. So I was like a year later, but. I was in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at that point, and we had the bus. We called it the Green right. Limo. The Green Limo would take us everywhere. <laughs> and I there's no Green Limo here in the great city of Los Angeles for these kids. But uh I think it was like, you know, lockdown and like the that delay. They just don't yeah. care. Yeah. No. They don't no. care. But yes, you're so right. When we when it was time to get our license, we're like, boom, out the door. Let's go. Let's go get I it. I gotta go. I gotta get I, it. I love that you've got a pineapple on your thing there behind you. There it is. Yeah. It's like my little hidden thing. So just in case you're like actually watching it, that it's uh you see it, right? I like that. I like that. That was a fun little uh and the show was full of Easter eggs, but it was fun. They were fun, they were full of Easter eggs and it just you know, it was an ad lib line in the pilot. 
that just kind of the you know tumbled and kind of like a snowball gained steam and the the boys decided to put it in almost every episode you know that psych is one of those shows that it shouldn't have worked you know it should have just been ridiculous and slap oh, super silly and 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 yes yeah, too silly to work yeah but it worked and i don't know if we could say why no. i mean james and dule they were very different people coming in but they somehow they you know the writers figured this out early on they finished each other's sentences yeah. they could do that in real life and they're like wait what's happening who are these guys you know so it was like lightning in a bottle but it's so broad silly if you think about it like it shouldn't it shouldn't have worked we all should have gotten right. like really annoyed with them smack them across the head say let's move on but it was fun and it was that moment in time with that uh, blue skies era of usa network yeah. that uh people were waiting for it i know usa had some good shows back in the day they did didn't they yeah yeah bonnie led uh uh she led a really good net because we were there with monk and then it was like white collar suits yeah. was at the end because that's when they started getting yeah, suits came in near the end but yeah, yeah they, they were like stuff. hey you guys are a little you're not as sexy as these guys, what are we going to do here? <laughs> I said, I don't know, put me in another suit. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. Ooh, heels. You um, know, the first the first thing I remember seeing you on was actually uh, Buffy. The worst episode ever of the entire series. <laughs> I think it's on a couple. Of, it's on a couple of, um, you know, like if you look up some online publications like Variety or Vulture, they'll say, let's rank all the Buffy the Vampire episodes and or Buffy the Vampire Slayer episodes and like Double Meat Palace. <clears throat> yeah, it's up there at least in the top 10 of like one of the worst episodes <laughs> ever. And I'm like, yeah, I was there. Well, I and I say that, but now that I'm thinking about it, I think I'm wrong because you because you were you were in The Fugitive. And that I was what? before Buffy. It was before Buffy. I was still in Chicago. Uh, when I was doing The Fugitive. I And if you look carefully, you'll see my name three times in the credits of The Fugitive. What is it? Is it once as Kirsten, once as Kirsten? And once as Christina. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm so glad that we're on the same page here. Now, I, <laughs> uh, I started on The Fugitive as the assistant to the casting directors. Oh. So I am the assistant casting director to the Chicago casting directors because they cast the big names, you know, out here in L.A., and then when um, they came to location, they were shooting in Chicago. They uh, they opened up a Chicago casting office, and I was out of you know college, and it was they were like, hey, you want to come in? So I got to have like this kind of fly on the wall, like big Hollywood movie, sitting in on the casting sessions, and then sitting in on the casting sessions with the directors and the producers, watching who they cast and you know i was like oh i'm so excited for this person like oh i don't know my character's name was betty or like the gal was going for betty she's so good watch her and they're like oh no oh oh her <laughs> eyes are so far apart no oh and i was like oh wow sometimes there's really nothing you can do it's out of your yeah, control it's all opinion yeah, it's all opinion. And like seeing how the other puzzle pieces work of like, oh no, she was too tall. They actually need a shorter person to match the other three women. You know what I mean? So it was like, oh, I get it. It's out of my control. Well, so how did how did that role lead to actually being in the film? <laughs> yeah, so I was the assistant to the casting director and then the offices closed because they were done casting. And they're like, hey, do you want a PA? Do you want to be a production assistant? So I said, <laughs> yes, yes, let's keep this party going. So I was a production assistant, um, a set PA for the um, for the movie shoots. I wound up getting like Cela Ward fresh orange juice in the morning. I was the gal who would like greet you like, hi, good morning. Welcome. You call us in five minutes. So <laughs> that was me. Um, and then because I was doing that for so long, they're like, hey, do you want to do you want to part we've got this you know it's just a couple lines yeah um and they just kind of gave me the part what were you were you trying to be an actress at that time yeah 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 okay 
Okay. I, you know, and actually I, they moved to North Carolina for some of the shoots during the fugitive, like the big, um, the big train crash. Yeah. And like the, that's when he gets away, the train goes over, over the bridge this whole thing. They said, we're going to North Carolina, start packing. And I said, no, I can't. I'm doing a play over at Steppenwolf Theater. I'm an actor. <laughs> I'm doing a play. <laughs> uh, and I, you know, honestly, I think they probably couldn't believe it. They're like, you're not coming with us to be, you know, <laughs> this is a movie. You're going to go work as a set PA. And I said, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to be right back. I'm going to go <laughs> act. So uh, I was over at Steppenwolf. Uh, theater and so when they came back to Chicago to finish up you know the other shoots I stepped back in and they're like That's hilarious oh, what? we kind of liked you have That's a part good. I was like all right thank you thank you for <laughs> noticing me in the corner of the warehouse yelling quiet on set uh so yeah yeah I had a uh my my high school sweetheart we you know we kind of grew up together and we did that you know every weekend we were at a movie basically you know it started when we were too young to drive so that was the only way we could see each other you know get dropped off the movie but she her favorite movie and book was um a little romance so she she would i i didn't know it at the time but but every time we go to the movie she would take those tickets and put them in a chapter of that book with that so wow (laughs) then we yeah she so when we we went off to college she went you know i stayed home to for college she went off to a different state and and we kind of you know drifted apart as you do and and as you do but we stayed fairly close and at some point she she gave me that book and i had no idea and i've still got it and you can flip through it and you can see all these movies and they're all the 80s movies so it's like goonies and ghostbusters and one of the last movies in that book that we saw together was fusion i just remember get out of dodge yeah wow i mean that is that's a fantastic time capsule i know i know i was like this is amazing Uh, yeah yeah i mean such memories and you kind of like can you kind of look at each one and go oh i remember what we had i i I can actually It, it brings up you know a lot of uh a lot of memories because her uh, her family uh, owned a, a set of pizza restaurants local. Okay, with yeah. that, and there was one right next to the theater. So we would go see a movie and then walk over and 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 eat, you know, have pizza, and then our parents would come and pick us up from there and stuff. So it just oh, look at you know, that nice young memory. love. That's a great memory. That's yeah. a great memory, you know. And I I wish that I mean out in uh, here. You still have to like buy your tickets, but then it's a lot of times you just, you know, you buy your tickets and your seat, yeah. you know, the kids yeah. really don't know if like you had to get there early to stand sure. in line and maybe it'd be sold out. Well, now it's like just the paper printout, you know, it's not yeah. an actual little ticket. Yeah. The paper printout that they would rip or give you half. Yeah. Um, and then you don't know where you were going to sit and you were lucky, especially if it was opening weekend of like, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. We're in the front row, but it's fine. Yeah, I can it's see. fine. It'll it's fine. Good. It's fine. That was back like like it, it, they only had three, you know, they could show three movies at one time, but they would get a movie and keep it for months. You know, like months, like right? Raiders was there for a year. <laughs> a year? Oh a year. my god, that is one of my favorite movies of all time. Me too. Me too. I've know. seen it like a hundred times because I it know. was there for a year. So like we quote it, and it was we my husband and I, we were trying to figure out like we love showing our kids movies and my daughter is a huge movie buff and my son is as well. And it was like, don't show them the movies too early. Right. You know, like what if they hate them? And then our hearts would be broken. So it was like all we were timing it to like, how soon can we show them Raiders that they'll get it? They'll understand like the, I, you know, yeah. just the icons of both of what Spielberg was tr- doing with like harkening back to the 40s. Now I have doubts travel. though, because now you you already told me she hasn't even seen Psych yet. No, she's not real sweet. <laughs> she's, she's a dud. Oh my God, wouldn't that be horrible? Uh, <laughs> she likes movies. She likes movies more than she likes television. That's fair. But, you know, to each their own, right? She's doing her movie thing right now. She's a movie buff. Casablanca, Ooh. Chef's Kiss. I'm like, what you are got you? Good taste. I know, but it's weird, right? I mean, that's yeah. odd. 
It's odd. You know, I I grew up with with my mother uh, loving movies, and I watched a lot of movies from the fifties and sixties and stuff. Did you that that I love? So I kind of get that. You know, if if you pass that on to her, then that that makes sense. And I think, do you remember the first movie you ever saw in a theater? I remember the first one that I saw by myself, you know, without uh, babysitters. That was uh, Clash of the Titans. No. Yeah. little stop motion action. Yeah. So my, my mother was, it was at a mall and she was shopping and let me go by myself. Fine, so, go to the movies. Just, yeah. oh, leave me alone. I'm guessing one of the first uh, uh, movies that I remember would be Star Wars. I remember going to see that in the theater. Yeah. But I was, you know, with my parents. I remember my aunt taking me to go see Superman. Oh, yeah. Christopher yeah. Reeve Superman. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, it was just, it, it, I remember it being so big, so big. I'd never seen anything that big that I can remember. And I thought that this was such a special, a special little thing. I was little, but I remember it. I remember I mean, where did, we were sitting. Is, is that part of the reason you got into acting? You know, I don't know why I did. My dad's a pastor. My mom was a teacher. And so like standing up in front of people talking was always there. Yeah. You know, every Sunday, somebody was up in front of everybody talking, right? He had no problem with it. But he would act also in um, high school and college. Oh, okay. Um, and I sang a song when I was in kindergarten. They stuck me on top of a piano and they're like, Kirsten, sing. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Okay, if you say so. Um, and I think they just kind of saw that I was unafraid to do that. And then, you know, one thing led to another. I went to a fine arts school in Chicago and then Milwaukee. And then I went to uh, uh, majored it in college. So yeah. I got lucky. Yeah, it's usually not very easy. No, you have to be at the right place at the right time. Kind of like know, the I kind of figured that out. Uh, not that I could act, but but just from talking with so many actors, is that a lot? It's not a. There's a lot of people that are talented. A lot of it has to do with just being in the right place at the right time. Yeah, it was. It really was like that fugitive sessions that I was watching, because I would be so excited for them, you know, for the director and the producer to see these actors face. <laughs> I'm like, they're so good. Just watch this. They're they're amazing. I I'm in awe. And they're like, no, next, next. <laughs> oh, but there was a VCR, so it's like, like you know, so it fast forward. Um, so yeah, it was it's really it's so much luck. It's so much chemistry of you, you just happen to meet somebody and you have a connection with them, you know, with like either an actor or even the writer directors, you know. Yeah of just really working together because it's very symbiotic acting is very symbiotic does it it does it does it hurt that kind of networking now that most of the stuff is done you know through tapes instead of being in person oh it's horrible can yeah. i say that out loud i'm just gonna <laughs> say it out loud yeah no um with 2020 you yeah. know uh, they, it was doing it a little bit beforehand with a lot of the um like younger actors right. who would come out and they'd try to get their start. They try to get their foot in. They would put themselves on tape at home. Yeah. And then when 2020 and COVID and lockdowns and then distancing and it became so much harder and casting directors closed their offices. Yeah. Um, and that walking into a room, that smile that you meet with somebody across from you, yeah. that, electricity that you have reading with somebody else in the room can't be captured we're all trying our damnedest you know to do it on zoom and video you don't get redirected at all on tape don't get redirected no it's it's really hard because they're like whoa 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 stop try it this way right and like the best actors can make that change on a dime they can take the direction and change it up and you see magic and you feel something in the room of like yeah that was it. That was it, wasn't it? Yeah, that's that's gone. That's it's few. It's not gone. It's just very few and far between right yeah. now. I don't yeah. think it's going to go back though. I don't think so. I think that uh, cost cutting has come. You know, they realize, oh, we can do it like this. Yeah. Why bother? Why bother renting a room and hiring people to manage? I'd, I'd give up 
the uh, the benefits that we got from 2020, if it would mean skipping all the mess with the COVID. But 2020 was great for us as a podcast because nobody, everybody was looking for something to do. Everybody I right? asked to come on, they're like, oh yeah, I got nothing else going on. No, thank you for noticing me. Yeah. 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 No, podcasts were huge. It was this outlet. Well, Zoom. Yeah, Zoom. Oh, thank goodness for Zoom. You know, and I don't know how, you know, how old your kids were at the time, but, you know, our kids were doing online school. Yeah. And it was that kind of like this whole other industry. We Just- had um, three of our grandkids were born early 2020. Oof. And, you know, we had that whole interaction through a door type of thing. And it took them, you know, a year after we got out to get used to everybody. I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. A friend of mine, their kid was born in May 2020. No, uh, like, no, before COVID, um, but like 19, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they didn't have a cold. They never caught a cold until 2021, 2022, when things started opening up again. And then this toddler went boom. I had to go to the hospital. Oh my God. Because, I because it, yeah, like, hadn't built yeah. up immune system. No immune systems, no immune. And it was just kind of like another hidden, you know, pitfall yeah. of all of this. But, you know, knock on wood, I guess we're here now. But, but well, yes, fantastic for podcasters. Yeah, it was. It, it was, it's probably the reason we're here now. You know, I don't know that we would be, but that being said, I'd still give it up because it, it was awful for everybody. Awful. Yeah, but but there are some things that you would be like, oh, I wouldn't trade that for the world. Well, you know, looking uh, back, but... I'm like, we probably yeah, didn't like... take as good of a, you know advantage of that as we should have. Because mm-hmm. when are we ever going to be locked in where you have to stay home? That's not you have happen. to stay home. You have to talk to the person across from you. Yeah, you have to like visit with your family. Um, it was pretty family. nice because you know my wife she travels all the time. But she was stuck at home, too. And I, I was like, I know I'm probably driving you crazy, but having you home is pretty great. <laughs> it's like, I love you, baby. And I just I forgot about that. This is amazing. Like, I need you to leave. I need you to yeah. leave. I'm yeah, so I, I'm home. sure that I was driving her nuts. But no, I'm, like, I'm, I'm so sure glad you're here. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> so <laughs> you you mentioned you were you were pregnant during the pilot of Psych. Mm-hmm. Did did they? Did they know? Because, I mean, your character obviously, you know, was pregnant there at the beginning. Was that, did they just say, okay, we're going to write it in? Or did that? Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. So when I auditioned for it, I was, I was still able to hide it. You know, I was at that stage where I just looked boxy, you know, like she should, (laughs) she should really lay off the bagels. It could have been an excuse for me, but it was like, I just looked boxy. And I, um, I don't have anything with me, but I would hold folders or right. like purses in front of me. I'm just like, oh, what's this? Uh, so when they called me back, I was like, oh, we got to tell them. Yeah. I mean, because I'm not going to get any smaller. It's only going to just be more obvious. Um, there's a parasite here and I need to take care of it. <laughs> and so um, we told them and they loved Fargo. Oh. They loved the Cone Brothers. Um, our EP, Steve Franks, he had he had a newborn. And um, one of our producers, Chris Henze, he also had um a little one. And so their their families were just beginning. Um, so they kind of wrapped their heads around, let's do our own Francis McDormand, let's Love have that. a pregnant police chief, um, and let's see how it goes. So they took the chance on me. Um, and then made her pregnant. Yeah, and then- I, I love that because nobody really likes the, you know, where you have to hide it. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> it really is. And I know it was hard for Jasmine during our um, during the second psych movie because she was wildly pregnant. She was ready to <laughs> pop pregnant. Like and they just kept having to shoot her from like here down, you know, because she and Dulé were expecting their baby. Yeah. Um, and it's hard. It is hard um, to shoot around stuff, but that's, you know, um, but at least they took it as an asset instead of a handicap, which a lot of times pregnant women are looked at of they're like, I don't know if I want to take that risk with her. Um, And instead 
our our producers embraced it and they're but like it let's work it fit right in with the show you just have to think outside the box and it yeah. did fit in you know it's just a little added quirk and like the show is full of quirks let's you know let's add another one so i was very very happy very grateful and then i went home we shot the pilot we all left vancouver canada we got picked up i had a baby and then when she was three months old we started traveling back and forth to vancouver like I carry her. I was like, well, I'm your food source. So let's right. go. You got you to gotta come with me. <laughs> you got to come with mom. Um, and, uh, and they still kept me pregnant. And then I got to have the baby on the show. Yeah. So yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Do, do you have a favorite episode? Um, I think uh, across the board, um, last night, Gus is a fan favorite of when the boys are trying to figure out exactly what happened. It's like our hangover episode. Yeah. Um, I also love Dee's Nups, the one where Lassie gets married and the yeah. chief has a little too much to drink. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, There Will Be Blood, the one with Jane Lynch is my sister. Oh, I love that one. Yeah, I didn't I didn't remember the name. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah, it's like, what what is it? She They're looks like she could be your sister. Thank you, because I'll take that as like a really positive thing. I dug her so much. And except for like the literally 12 inches difference between us. Right. Um, <laughs> she was so giving. She was she came ready to play. You know, she hadn't done um, Glee yet. Glee had not started. Right. Uh, she'd done the uh, the whatchamacallit um, Adam McKay movies like, you know, now, Adam right. McKay didn't do 40-Year-Old Virgin. Is he 40-Year-Old Virgin? Anyway, but you know, know. Of like those broad comedies, she'd done a couple of those. And then she came and did our show, which I think got her glee. So I'm going to just put it out there that we helped launch her career. Um, <laughs> but she she wanted to hang out. She wanted to be friends. She, you know, it. Yeah. I think all the big stars that we had on the show didn't go to their trailer and just kind of sit and wait. Um, almost the majority of them would be like, hey, this is kind of a weird show. You guys are kind of kooky. Let's go yeah. see where this goes and let's hang out, you know? I, I, um, as a fan, I kind of love that because, yeah, that was, I, you know, it was it was such a quirky show, so quotable, which is part of the reason it's so great. But then yeah. the guest stars were amazing. Oh, the guest stars were incredible. We would joke that we're like, uh, yeah, we would never get a guest star on the show if we weren't series regulars because we are not big enough to be on the show. <laughs> you know, when when William Shatner is walking onto your set, you're like, ah. Um, so it was it was great. It, we got to meet so many people that I don't know if we ever really would have met yeah. in this. I mean, so many week after week after week um, with this kind of stunt casting. That's what they used to call it, yeah. stunt casting. Um, but Jane was wonderful and she was, she'd be like, yeah, do you want us in the same shot? And she would take like a wide second position so she could be like head to head with me. I'm like, I know I'm short, but come that, on, man. That's funny. And so, that's just like her. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you're not surprised to hear a story like no, that. about that, it, right? You're not. Yeah. I got yeah. to, um, I got to moderate for William Shatner. He came through town with his, uh, show and mm -hmm. like, I didn't want to. I knew he's coming through and I'm like, they're going to, need, I was telling my wife, they're going to need a moderator. I was like, I, I don't want to have to ask to to do that, but I'm like, I'm the local podcast. Right. But they reached out, they reached out to me and I was like, yes, yes. It's like, but it's I got like, to, um, you know, he was, it was so easy. Cause I, I like ask a question. He talked for a half an hour. I'd ask a question. He talked for a half an hour. Right? So I, I asked like four questions. And that's time. Okay. Time. Everybody. Thanks for coming. But I got to have dinner with him ahead of the show. Like, it was, um, they showed Wrath of Khan to ah. the audience, and then he comes out and answers questions. That's that's the the format. So while they're watching Wrath of Khan, I'm just back having dinner, just the two of us. And oh, so wow. I just, yeah, for me, it was, because I told people, like, when one-on-one, -on -one, you know, he's just, he's just Bill. You know, he he's interested yeah. in me, asking questions. He talked about his dogs. You know, it's just Bill. As soon as he steps on stage, that's William Shatner. You know, it's completely different. It's a two name person now. Yeah. It's a first and last name person. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it it it's kind of like when you meet those icons, when you meet those heroes of you're just kind of 
please be cool. Right. <laughs> please be nice. Like, don't mess this up for me. Don't mess this up for me, man. <laughs> Um, and again, how my daughter's so interested in movies, uh, you know, she's like, if I have to watch television, fine, right. but she would rather watch movie after movie after movie. And I took her to a screening, um, at the DGA, which is the director's guild here in oh, LA. Yeah. They sometimes have, um, you know, current screenings for free for members. And then they'll have a talk back, uh, at the end with the director and they will have a moderator. Um, and I said, this movie is showing, she's like, I care nothing about that movie. I'm like, yeah, but the moderator is Sam Raimi. And she's like, oh my God, I have to go mom. We have to go. I said, you know, that they're not going to discuss any Sam Raimi movie. That's they're right. not going to discuss. He's just moderating. <laughs> yes. He, you know, there will be no evil dead. There is zero of that. And she's like, I know, but if I could see him in real life. And so. It was a fairly long movie. It was a very long movie. And she's like, I gotta go to the bathroom. I'm like, okay, go, go, go. And she went out and I, after a while, I'm like, wow, it's really, it's yeah. really long. Like, I hope she's okay. When do I need to leave? And she's, you know, she's fine. She's a teenager. Somebody's she, back there trying to sell her a Picasso or something. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, we were in Hollywood. It could have been an old fashioned at the old bar, at, you know. So she comes back in right at the as the movie's ending and she is all aglow she's like oh my god it's sam Raimi. He, he, he was in the lobby and it's again he did not disappoint he kept telling him like his um like his handler like hello mr Raimi, it's time to go and he's like just a minute just a minute i'm talking to this young you know like do you want to be a writer do you want to be a director what are you doing here wow. and it's when they're cool they're amazing they're cool you know so it makes such a difference I, it's because some some actors just get it some don't most do most do they really are and i think the actors that don't kind of come up from um like a bubble area of they were really hot yeah. or they had like something just very special at the time that shot them to stardom yeah but they didn't have that interpersonal history they didn't do stage right didn't shoot their own films on eight millimeter you it know it surprised like, me when i started doing the podcast how many actors are actually introverts and you know and 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 we don't like a lot of us are introverts but then we expect you know our our uh our heroes to be a certain way well they have the same you know anxiety that the rest of us do the rest of us do <laughs> you know and i think it one of the big um surprises and i don't think i'm speaking out of you know, out of line, but James is very quiet. James, yeah. Rod you know, James Roday Rodriguez is very quiet. And that energy is for him. Yeah. So that he's quiet and he's just, he's really just loves sitting back, loves listening, loves watching. And then he, you know, starts rolling the cameras and then he's got to be Sean. He's got to be this guy and the big guy and with the one-liners that just kind of roll off his tongue. But he's a quiet guy. Yeah. And he, you know, it's like, oh my God, what do I, I have to go talk to people? It's like, it's okay. Well, yeah, when he's done acting, he probably needs that quiet time to recharge. Yeah. He would go home and like, let's make tacos. Yeah. <laughs> I got to just chill. Can we just chill? It surprised and me when I was uh, researching to to talk with you, how, how many connections Psych had with the West Wing. Do we have a lot of them? There's several. Are he there really been on the West Wing? I kind of surprised me. I was like, oh, I knew that fella Dulé was. Yeah. Yeah. He, he had a little. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, <laughs> I make the joke that I can never work on another long term show with Dulé again because I was pregnant on the West Wing when I did my episode of the West Wing. And then I was pregnant on Psych. And I'm like, baby's not getting pregnant anymore. So yeah. Dulé, we're not working together on a long term <laughs> show ever again. And I think you're the connection. So. That's we're funny. done so yeah but that was on the west wing when i was in the west wing that was me hiding my my baby bump yeah you know just hold the files there and just kind of talk with my person <laughs> well i told you i'm re-watching psych but yeah. i've i've been on this i got on this uh uh kick of re-watching 
old sitcoms. My so my wife she takes a bath every night. That's her unwinding time. So I started watching you a sitcom. water in West Virginia. Yeah, <laughs> well, we've got a little bit. No, we don't have water here in Los Angeles. We can't yeah, take we baths don't. anymore. No, no, she okay. takes she t- she loves her bath. You know, glass of wine bath. And so I watch you know comedy. So the new Frasier was coming out. So I rewatched Cheers and then rewatched Frasier. So I got to see that episode of you on Frasier recently. Recently with my short hair. Yeah. I know yeah. the nineties were good to a lot of people, weren't they? You know, I always tell people you wouldn't know it by looking at me now, but back in the eighties and nineties, I had that hair. Just like you did not have did. long hair. Oh my well, gosh. Yeah. How, how I had long? the, well, mine was kind of, I kind of had it feathered back, kind of Sean Cassidy like. <gasps> you are know, so cool. Yeah, the little shoulder length, you know, feathered back. I used to have this brush that is kind of like a horse brush. You just slide your hand into it and then. Yes. And just kind of like you were one of those guys. Did you play sports? I did. They, yes. I was going to say, oh my God, I would have totally, you would have never looked my way in high school because I was the one with the braces and was really loud. Yeah, but see, awkward. I was nerdy though. I, 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 I hung out with like, I the I hung out with a group of jocks, but it was the yeah. nerdy jocks. So it was like backup quarterback, you know, <laughs> it's, so, it, we were on the team, but we were not the stars. <laughs> you would have been like pommel horse guy right now yeah. at the Olympics. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so you are Mr. Pommel horse of the eighties, as far as like the, the geek jock. That's exactly like, you and know, the on closer. the weekends we were playing Dungeons and Dragons, but then during the week we were doing our sports. <laughs> What do you got in your pocket? I got my horsehair comb and my dye. Well, my you mentioned, you mentioned dye. Your, uh, your, your dad was a uh, pastor. Uh, mm-hmm. My grandfather was a preacher, Bob, Baptist preacher. And I that's where I got the brush. I stole it from him because he had that preacher hair. And that was, you know, silver with the baby. <laughs> he was one of those like very sharp dressed preachers, oh, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, and he was only... He was only about five three, just a little guy. But you know, he he was one of those. He walked in the room and he would mm-hmm. command the room. Yeah. Know? But he was just, just such a it. little guy. But he just, you know, he was a preacher. Lutherans, I'm Lutheran. We we're not flashy. We would enter a room and maybe apologize. Thank you. Oh, sorry. You know, thank you so much. Oh, you're you're sitting ten rows back. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I know. Don't don't worry about it. We um, always had to sit in the front row and. If we did anything wrong, he would call us out from the pulpit. So you did not want to get yelled at. You had to represent? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You didn't want to get yelled at in front of the congregation. (laughs) Oh, no. And dad would call me out every now and then of like, of like, oh, Kirsten, last week. Yeah, I was in the sermons and I'd be like, in the height of embarrassment, you know, and then he would, we'd all go out to lunch after the service, go to the little restaurant yeah. on the corner in Chicago. And I'd be like, dad, can you take your collar off? You are so embarrassing. Like you're the pastor. Oh my God. Um, like everybody, no, I was just no. such an embarrassed teenager, but yeah. So, but Ooh, representing and being on display. So yeah. Yeah. That's I, wasn't you're a fan podcaster. Of that. I always say that. I was like, I've got some mixed feelings. Of growing up in the church. <laughs> I, I still have mixed feelings and I will talk openly about it. We will be too opinionated. Uh, yeah. About our mixed feelings. That's right. That's right. Um <laughs> not, not. So, but you can only say that when you come up from it. I mean, you come up in it, we it's uh we get to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Because we've been there and we've we have been, been on display representing front row and a topic of sermons. Oh yeah. Well, and I always, like, I always thought it was just me, but I'll talk to my cousins. We all grew up in that same church and they felt the same way. You know, I just, same grandpa. Talked yeah. About. yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we're kind of like soldiers going into war. Like, yeah, same like trauma. We've been through something. We've been through something, man. We've been There's through a, it. I always say, cause I'm, I'm an introvert at, at, at heart. You know, I get done podcasting. Oh. I go and I have to have my quiet time with that. Okay. Well, okay. when I was when I was growing up, I was shy. So getting called out in church was like the worst thing you could do to me. Yeah, your little ears turning red. <laughs> it's like, oh my Thank god! Goodness I had all that hair to cover it up. Yeah, and then you could never take it back. It was just kind of like, well, that's out there now. Everybody knows. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. 
Yeah. And then you have to hear from it. You hear from, you know, people in the congregation will bring it up later. People in the congregation who you don't know. Yes. They'll be like, <laughs> oh, Oh, you were so cute. I saw you doing that. And your dad said that you were singing in the shower again. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. I was, like, I was just trying to bathe. It's like, come on, dad. I know. Come on, dad. You need to go outside the house yeah. for your inspiration from the book of Matthew or something like whatever. Love you on This Is Us too. I could only watch one episode at a time of This Is Us because it was too, it's too much. I couldn't binge that. That much. one, I, and I know people who did. I'm like, you want to cry like that? Oh, no, it's Every too, it, it's just exhausting. It was exhausting. Gripping, but exhausting. Yeah, exhausting. I mean, and they were all great. Yeah. Um, Mandy, it was just wonderful. You watch her transform, and I got, you know, because I had older Mandy Moore right. in my scenes. Um, you know, and it's just kind of like, you're younger than me, and look at that. You're all like grandma. Um and yeah, they really did a good job with that transformation, though. She oh, believed yeah. it. You know, and I think that she had to get there super early, you know, when she'd have to go through those makeup transformations. Um, but wonderful, carrying it off. And it was, and that was a great experience as well. That was a gift. Um, so that was, it was fun. And it was fun to be a part of like a huge show. Oh my gosh. And, and I mean, Mandy was probably the most famous at the time. But that yeah. you look back on it now, and that cast does just bigger and better things now. Well, Mandy Moore and that uh, what's his name, Milo. Oh How do you yeah, say his last name. Vin Milo Vin was on uh, Vin Heroes. Vin Heroes, yeah. yeah. Heroes lost. Heroes. 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 Gosh, I feel like they were the same show sometimes. I know. Well, they were out around the same time. They were out at the same time, right? Yeah. Okay. And you remember Heroes? That first season was just a monster. Monster, mind blowing. I could watch. That, you know, if we had had binging back then, you don't have to wait. A oh, week. yeah. Oh, Although, so good. are you are you like like I can binge and I enjoy it, but I prefer the week to week because I like to I like the like dissecting an episode and reliving it and all yeah. that. And then, then you get the next one. It's like going to the pizza parlor after the movie of like, let's dissect what we just saw. Like what we just watched. Um, go I back the next week and watch it again. <laughs> we can do two. I, I think we've kind of given ourselves... Like I can watch two shows back to back if they're yeah. hour longs. Like, Fair. so we're, we're watching at the same time. Uh, we're watching the Americans because I've never seen the Americans. It's a great show. Oh yeah. my God. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah. It's intense though. Oh and yeah. It's exhausting. I, was like, I, think, I think we're not going to, we don't need to be, we don't need to watch another one. That was pretty hardcore, but we're also watching at the same time. We're rewatching Justified. Oh, and, we just, yeah, we rewatched that uh, uh, when the new one came out. Timmy Alphon, come on now. It's so good. And now those I can watch maybe two or three in a row. Yeah. And just watch him and Walton Goggins <clears throat> just oh chew up the scenery. That The two of them. Yeah, but I think people are like rediscovering Walton Goggins again, like my daughter is. And she's in love with him because they're all watching Fallout. Right. And, and so they're saying, like, I know. It's like, what do you mean? That ghoul is, ooh, that ghoul is sexy. I was like, what? <laughs> He's the ghoul. Why do you think he, I was like, okay, all right, let's, let's, let me show you a show. That's let right. me show you something yeah, else. I got, yeah, I got my son uh, watching Justified, and, and it's not easy getting him to, to try something, but he loved it. it. Yeah, he loved it. I just had, uh, I loved uh, uh, Timothy on Deadwood. So oh, it's, it's Earlier today, I was talking with uh, Jerry Jewell that played uh, Jewell on uh, Deadwood. So we and got Deadwood. We, yeah, so oh we just God. had the conversation about uh, Tim. <laughs> oh, look at that! See, you know, this is something in the universe. Timothy Oliphant, you ready? Just be ready because something's happening. Um, Deadwood. I remember watching that. That was ninety, what ninety eight? Somewhere 90, in the late nineties. Yeah, late nineties, right? Going. This is Shakespeare. Yeah. This is gorgeous. David Miller, you know, it's like what he was writing and what they were saying. And it was ahead of its time, really, because if that Absolutely. show was made today, it would have lasted longer. I think so. I mean, it it introduced the U.S., I think, to Ian McShane, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Yeah. That's so good. He was, was just so good. every episode of just, you know, wanting to see where these characters are go. And I was like, that man is soliloquizing 
directly to the camera. Yeah. What's happening? This is a Western. I thought this was what, where's the hookers? You know, and it was so good. It definitely ahead of its time. Um, so, you know, seeing him go into Justify just made sense. I mean, my opinion, he should not do anything without a cowboy hat. Give no, him- and in Boba Fett, he still has his cowboy hat, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. He do, yeah. he do. Um, because how if it works, right, it where, works. It when it works, when you <laughs> find your groove, it's just kind of like it's like that's a 10 gallon hat on a 20 gallon head. So I need my hat back. <laughs> It's like, ah, oh, he's so, it's so good. It's just good storytelling. And I think that's the thing when you can get wrapped up into great storytelling yeah. that you want to stay with it. I want to see where this goes. I want to go for your ride. I'm, I bought the ticket. Let's do this. Let's do it. So yeah. We're I'm really, hoping we get a new season of the, the new Justified. I haven't seen Primeval. I haven't either. Oh, oh you haven't, haven't seen the new one? No. Oh yeah. It's worth watching. I, it, I mean, they left it kind of open so they could do a second season, but I haven't heard anything. Was Boyd there? Did I Boyd Crowder come back? Yeah. I believe he shows up right at the end of it, which oh. kind of leads you to believe that maybe the next season would be. Yeah. Just know. dangle that. Where are they? Are they in Miami? They're in Miami. They're in Miami. Okay. So he goes back to Miami. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'd actually went back and read the books that it's based on. And it's Elmore Leonard. Yeah, the love, love. <sighs> so good. So good. That um, Blood Meridians. The no, that's Cormac. That's Cormac. that's yeah, that's Cormac McCarthy. Yeah, yeah. yeah Blood Meridian. Oh, wait, you've read Blood Meridian? Yeah. That's hard. I, it is a hard one to read, but I loved it. That's hard. A lot the road? Of Did you read the road? That. What's that? Did you read the road? Oh, I love the road. See, and the movie was terrific, but it's hard, right? It's hard. No country, it's just kind of like it's yeah. there's you have to be in that headspace, I think, to read him and then to appreciate him. Cormac McCarthy, that's right, but right. Elmore Leonard, oof, he oh, he's just, such a great writer. And and the um, the justified books, the ones he, he wrote, and I think the 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 primeval's based on Raylan, I think the book was named Raylan, uh, is so well written. Oh, baby, you froze. I'm still here. Can you hear me? Which are cute, but <laughs> I'm still here. I promise. Is it me? I don't know. Can you hear me? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit pause for us. Well, maybe. I'm not laughing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So on the the possibility that we were paused, Yes, let which me, I don't think we were, but you think we might have been. We might have been, but if we were, let me back up just a little bit. Where can we find you on social media? Social medias. I'm on Instagram at Nelson Kirsten. So just spell my name, but don't spell it backwards. Just, you know. See, I kind of hope that it was recording because then this is going to be hilarious. Because, right? It's just like people are going to be if like. if it wasn't, then they missed out on the best stuff. And they're going to think this is like Matrix. All over again. This is deja vu. Okay, so you can find me Instagram, Nelson Kirsten, possibly Twitter. Definitely Twitter. I'm still there as Nelson Kirsten, but it's kind of like a like a ghost land. Yeah, it's on Twitter. It's, it's a placeholder. Um, it's a placeholder. I sit on my name, I squat. Yes. Um, but I I dig Instagram. I dig, like I said, oh. I dig posting the pictures and then interacting with people there. You did uh you did a good job recapping. Just in case. Yeah. Okay. Thing, thing, thing. And then Facebook, let's be honest. You're not, you're not 70 yet. You don't need to be there. (laughs) It was, it was good for a little while. And then we messed it up. 2008 was a great year for Facebook. Um, And then we messed it up. And then, you know. I was running a Ticketmaster call center in 2008. Yeah. And. They partnered with Facebook when that Facebook first came out and they strongly encouraged us to join Facebook. So that's when I joined was I joined in 2008, too. Yeah, that's when I joined. Um, and it was, great it was like for, you know, like a year or two, I, at least a couple. But then when they started, you know, mining all of our stuff right. and then, and then just, selling our data and then we went to Instagram or I mean, if. You never want a TV movie made about your life. That's right. 
<laughs> so when they make a TV movie about like the downfall of Facebook or Cambridge Analytica or the social network, you you know you're in the you're doing something wrong. You're doing something wrong. Yeah. All right. Now this time I'm going to end it. Good luck. I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Thank you so much, Kirsten. Seriously, let's let's do this again. I know. I'll you know maybe next time we cook and we eat. Oh yes. It won't be me cooking, but I'll I'll bring my wife. She can bring your wife. You know, and then like I'll be I'll, I'll bring my wine. dog. You pour the wine and we'll chat and uh, and discuss geckos on flowers. See, I I love that because it's very 2020. You know, we were doing all the wine socials back then. <laughs> yeah, when you let's get our iPads, we'll pop them up someplace. <laughs> Follow along. Okay, hold on one sec. You know, I was a fan of Kirsten's uh, before we did this interview. That's why I reached out to try to talk with her. And I'm so much more of a fan of her now. She's she's awesome. That um, that was that was great. I hope hope you enjoyed that. Apologies for the uh, Internet interruption. I will say that uh, we have struggled with our Internet for the last couple of weeks Um supposedly they're working on the internet to make it better. So hopefully that's the uh, case, but it's caused us a few problems. So apologize that, uh, that we froze up for a minute and then we'll find out, but I'm not sure that it started recording again. I hope it did, but if it didn't um, apologies, cause you missed some good stuff. <laughs> Kirsten was terrific. We talked about most of the things I wanted to uh, talk about, but she has done so much. I, there's one that I wish I had asked about. Um, she did a couple episodes of uh, Everwood. Loved Everwood. I thought it was such a great um, show. Treat Williams, I think, was the uh, dad in it. So I wanted to ask her about that. So when she comes back, I'll make sure to uh, to bring that up. But she's been... Uh, in NCIS, Bones, Warehouse 13, you know, I'm a sci-fi guy. I love, uh, love that show. We had uh, Saul Rubinek has uh, been on, who was also on Frasier. Um, Parenthood, she was terrific in. Ghost Whisperer, Malcolm in the Middle, Without a Trace. We talked about Frasier. Allie McBeal, she made an appearance on. Um, the West Wing, Just Shoot Me, Boy Meets World, and The Practice. Love The Practice back in the day. And I think... If I remember right, the practice, David Kelly did the practice and then did um, Boston, let's see, Boston Legal and then Boston Public, maybe? I'm not sure. They all took place in Boston. I remember that. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in with us. If you're finding us for the first time and can stand, you know, how my mind jumps from place to place, uh, so glad that you're here. Our website is MeisterCon.com. We've got 818 episodes up right now and counting. We add to it probably every other day, but you can find all of those audio and video versions. It'll let you know if we're doing something in studio, if we're covering a convention, uh, going on location, whatever we got going on, be on the website, meistercon.com. Our YouTube channel is Meistercon Pod. Please subscribe. It's free. Really helps us out. And the last plug I'll mention is IMDB, which is the entertainment database, imdb.com. Recently named us a top 100 podcast. I can't even get it out. Um, 15 million podcasts out there to be on anybody's top 100 list is just uh, a blessing, just amazing. Uh, but if you'd like to see that, you can go to imdb.com, look up the two opinionated podcast. It'll list every guest that we've ever had on the show. So you can check us out uh, there as well. Thank you guys so, so much. Till next time. Bye, everybody.